little story, okay, about uh, arm wrestling and the way I've trained, and I'll take you to where I am today. Uh, so, so I started out arm wrestling as a kid. I had a lot of sports going on. I trained my whole body, okay? I was a basketball player. I did all sorts of stuff, whatever. And, you know, it, I was not just training for arm wrestling, although I was training for arm wrestling, but I had a lot of stuff going on. Um, by the time I was like 18 or 19, I already knew arm wrestling was gonna be the one, okay? I still did other sports, but I knew that in time they were gonna go and arm wrestling would remain, okay? So I still trained my whole body. I was a military guy. I played ball for Canada. Um, so I, had, I, I needed my whole body to work the whole time through my military career. I still to some degree kept my body working in full. Um, throughout that time, uh, when it came to my arm wrestling training, okay, uh, I, I kept records. I documented. I tried to always be progressive when I, when, I, when I trained. Every time I ever trained for like basically my entire life, every single time, it's a record in some way. In some way for most of my career, I'm keeping records. I'm doing either more reps or more weight or more something or do the same amount of work in less time every single time I do an exercise, okay? It's been that way. Um, but I reset, okay? So what happens after every major event? I take all my records, I put them on the shelf, and I start again from zero, okay? That allows me to kind of reevaluate, reset. But what happened, like, at, like if, if I go back in time, when I look at like when I was probably actually at, at one of my peaks, right around 2005 to 2008, or nine or 10, the amount of exercises I was doing was crazy. Like I was doing hundreds of different exercises, okay? Like I had an answer for if I'm over here and I'm kicking back or I'm spinning this or I'm doing a vector like this way or like dot pie or like through my pinky, you name it. If the position happened on the table, I had an exercise for it and I was training it. And that's cool, you know, it's, it's a lot, okay? A little bit, the way I see things is um, this experiment, which you guys are all involved in, this way of self-betterment or sport of arm wrestling. It's like a little plant that you grow and you prune it and you grow it and you prune it and you grow it and you prune it. And eventually you start to get, you start to have main themes. Um, stuff got really serious for me, really, really serious around 2014, okay? And at 2014, I had already gone really far in the arm wrestling world. I'd already uh, had surgeries, like I was already really far down the road, but I still had so much to learn. And that's the crazy thing is like, even when I was like, I, I have more knowledge now than I did, I'm not necessarily better, but I think I know more. Um, so it got really serious for me. I had no, I, I went from a place where I had a job, you know, I was paying for my family's food. I'm not a rich guy, okay? I, I get by, okay? I, I have, like, we're good, but I was not in a place where I could be like, okay, I don't need money anymore. I can just do whatever I want, you know? So 2014 or so, when around the time when I came to California was a big time for me because I went from having a job and I took the jump, okay? And I went to taking a year's leave without pay, okay? Which I was one of the hardest decisions of my life. Um, Cause I got kids, right? I got kids, I got a wife. And I was like, this is so irresponsible of me. I can't believe I'm doing this. I was in torment about it. But uh, either way, I knew that winning at that time in my life was really important. Winning's always important, you know, but at that time in my life, I had to win or else it was not gonna be cool. Like it was gonna be a very irresponsible decision of mine. But nevertheless, I took it. And so things started to change a lot for me in terms of like seriousness around that time. There was two big jumps for me, 
So 2014 was one of them. Uh, no, no money, no income. And every day, and this is during the WAL, okay? So w, it's like at the WAL, like 2015 kind of area. At 14, 15, 16, somewhere around there. My memory's terrible. Um, I blame not training my left hand anymore. That's what I blame my memory. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with weed, guys. Um, so, uh, so at that time, at that time, I kept on asking myself, what is the most important thing? What's the most important thing? What do I need to do to win in, in four months or three months or whenever the tournament was? And at that time in my development, and based off of the rule structure in the class and my opponents, I was like, it's cup, it's cup, it's cup all day. It's cup and cup and cup and cup. Didn't matter the state of my arm, didn't matter anything. I went down to my basement to train. I was cupping, I was cupping four times a day. I'd, I'd normally train about three or four times a day. This is my full-time job. So I basically wake up, train, eat, sleep, train, eat, sleep, train, eat, sleep, train. Okay, really okay, boring life, right? <laughs> I loved it, seriously. Uh, anyway, so I was, oh, I got, I pared down in from the hundreds of exercises I was doing. I was cupping, 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 cupping this way, cupping that way, cupping straight, cupping this way, cupping this way, cupping. Had good results. Had shockingly good results. I was, I had major concerns uh, because, you know, raised off of the same fitness stories we all are, balance, symmetry, cornerstones of health and fitness, right? Balance, symmetry, that's what people always say. Um, specialization, overtraining, look out, be careful. Didn't work that way for me. Good results, very good results. Um, so I was like, okay, there's something. I was like, okay, maybe that's a little bit too dialed in. Okay, so I went back to the standard. Rise cup rule, rise cup rule. So I pretty much stayed after that point, after that point to 2014, kind of started opening it back up again. Rise cup roll, occasionally work grip, but not grip with a gripper, grip with a pulley, okay? So it's still got a root, but not a thick spinner, but just the ability to close the hand so it's not involving wrist movement. Little bit of supination, tiny little bit, tiny, as you can tell with my arm resting style on, normally I'm blown open, normally. I still can do it, but no, most of the time I spend my time open. Um, okay, so I just was like, a lot of pruning, a lot of pruning, because it's about investment, it's about time. You only have so much time, you only have so many resources. Arm wrestling has to fit into your life. We all have, well, not all of us, but we all have different degrees of responsibility and ability to spend time on the sport and development. So you have to find a way to fit it in and with the time that you have, what do you spend it on? Okay, so I got rise cup roll. It always comes back rise cup roll. So I'm only concerned with winning guys. I'm not one of those guys. I actually, every time somebody says, but can you beat them this way? Or can you beat them that way? I don't give a shit. <laughs> Just every time I hear that, I laugh at the person inside of me. Mostly I do it publicly as well, but um, you know, uh, it's, it's not about can you do it this way or that way. There's the rules of arm wrestling, okay? Bill Collins is a referee. He gets a good paycheck from me. <laughs> I should stop saying that joke. Hey, where's Bill? He left, he left. Oh, he left, good, yeah, yeah. He, I paid him and he went on his way. <laughs> Anyways, it, like, there's the rules of the game. Okay, you play within the rules, the referee's gonna be on you, but just know that uh, it's about winning, okay? It's about winning, it's not about winning any certain way, you just win, okay? You win and you're doing the experiment properly. Okay, now when it comes to winning the game, winning a game, you think what's important? Uh, and I liked, I've been saying this a lot lately, uh, it's about openings. Uh, it's about the center of the table and I always come back to the most important things. What are the most important things? And you guys will see it and you'll feel it when you train with me, okay? And it's, it's my belief currently, and I hate to say these things because it shows a certain direction slightly off center. Uh, and, 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 I, and I caution to say it because you guys will likely take my advice. 
But I'm telling you, this is how I train, and this is how I train my children, okay? This is how I would advise my closest friend and all of you, okay? Uh, because I believe it to be true. Um, in my opinion, arm wrestling, after 30 some years, it has become almost, and I hate to say this, disappointingly simple, okay? It's much more simple. The farther I get to look at it, reevaluate, relook, reevaluate. In my opinion, there's, there's one thing that matters. One thing, one thing, and it's the top, it's the top of the pyramid. And whoever controls that is the winner, technically. And if you're a good arm wrestler, if you control that spot, you will win in some way. Um, and what is it? What is the one thing? It's, it's rising, guys. It's, it's rising. It's rising. It's the ability to re-grip. It's the ability to climb your hands. The ability to have the higher hand. Why? Why is that so important? Because you get to use more muscles against less muscles. It's really that simple. Okay, if you have the high hand, what is the choice? What is the choice? They're all bad, guys. It doesn't matter what your answer is. They're all bad answers. Okay, the best thing to do against the post is have a better post. If that's not your answer, you're in a technically shit spot. It's a shitty spot. I hate, I hate that it's that simple. You can make arguments if you have a great flop. That's probably the best debate point, okay? That's probably the best trump card, okay? Either you're going straight up or you're going straight down, okay? And there's something to shoulder commitment. There's something there. But I'll tell you, the, the cost of losing that way is much more painful. It's way worse, okay? You get to play more games. You get to have more experience going the other way. Um, rising, rising, rising above all else. Uh, so that's where I am today, okay? I basically now, post Levon, okay? Uh, it's about arm wrestling, guys. That's, that's the first thing, okay? I'm talking about gym exercises, you gotta get with the community, you gotta arm wrestle, you gotta know how to arm wrestle. If you don't know how to arm wrestle, all this stuff doesn't really matter, okay? You gotta spend a lot of time on the table, you gotta get comfortable, you gotta teach people, you gotta absorb energy, um, you gotta have the answers when a person's playing against you. But all your homework, if I had, if I had 10 minutes in a day, I would, I would do this. I would, if I'm healthy, if I'm not healthy, the rep range changes. If you're healthy, you get a strap like this. Okay, like this. You put it on your knuckle, right on your knuckle like this. Okay, in the morning when you wake up, you have this thing sitting on your floor somewhere in your house or at your job or whatever. You have a pile of weights, this is through it. You have some weights next to it. You come along, you sit down and pop, that's it. You've done your work and carry on your day. I'm telling you, it's that simple. Strength, strength is what wins arm wrestling matches. Okay, people talk about endurance and health. Yes, absolutely. If you're not healthy, you're not good to anybody. If you're healthy, if you feel good, you get stronger. You get stronger. That is the way you're going forward. Always, it's your North Star in the sport. You get stronger in the rise because that gives everybody a bad day. It gives everybody bad answers, less efficient, bad choices bad position, coming forward without their hand, trying to hook you, kings moving. Oh my God, it's all bad. Um, rise, guys, rise, 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 rise. Get stronger in the rise. Do your signal, come back a bit, a little bit heavier. The weight should get heavier, heavier, heavier as the day goes on. Never fail, never fail. People get scared of singles. When I say singles, I'm not telling you to lift the heaviest weight in the world and be straining and be struggling. I'm just telling you to get used to being strong with singles. Just go up there, you can do it, pop, it's heavy, but you can do it, not too hard, okay? Don't fail, don't fail all day, don't fail ever. Failing is terrible. I, uh, I went to uh, Russia, not Russia. When I say think of Poland, I still think it's Russia. Uh, got splattered by Denis Saplankov. And I'm just, you know, I'm hanging out. I'm just trying to soak up the information and knowledge from all these guys. And the Russians after, I say the Russians, it's not all Russians. <laughs> the 
but I'm listening to them and uh, they're nice to me, you know, they're, they're telling me their stuff and they're like, Americans, you know, North Americans, you know, no pain, no gain, no pain, no gain. This is a lot of our culture, no pain, no gain. We push, we fucking puke and the fucking work so hard. We think that's cool and it is. But, um, but if you want to be strong, no, no, you don't fail. You don't fail ever because you want to do the maximum amount of work over a long period of time. These things where you fail, it doesn't add up. When you go three months, six months, a year, 10 years, and every time you work out, you're failing and you're puking and you're hurting and you go to bed and the next day, your workout's gonna suck. It doesn't add up. You know, you, you work out at an intensity that's manageable. You can do it, guess what? You can do it again in half an hour. You can do it again in an hour. You can do it again tomorrow. You can do it every freaking day of your life. And that adds up to a whole lot of volume at a high intensity. So singles, post, that's the focus. So where does the post go? The post goes to the roll, okay? And that's this, okay? It's, it seems like it's almost the same thing, right? So you control the top, okay? What are the choices? What's the choice, okay? So if I don't have the top, okay, me, one of my choices, I'm gonna king's move, okay? I'll spin out, I'll go on the strap, I'll get tied up, and that's fine, have the top, I'll try and bait you, okay? Bad choice, terrible choice. The guy wants the king's move, you just climb it, just climb until the press is there, okay? Okay, so that's, say that's not the choice, maybe the choice is to come forward. With the wrist, without the wrist, it doesn't matter. The guy's gonna come forward. Okay, if he comes forward with the wrist, there's your roll, okay? All choices end in the flopper's press. <laughs> Terrible place to be. Terrible, it's like the worst spot in arm wrestling. So what do you train? You train the post and you, you train the roll, okay? And you guys are gonna feel this with me when I train. That's all I do now. That's all I do. I wake up in the morning, I got my two piles of weights. Single bang, single bang. <sighs> Carry on my day, okay? And I don't stress, I don't nothing, I don't work hard. It's easy, it's supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be. 20 minutes later, half an hour later, I don't count the time. I feel like I'm ready to go do it again. I go do it again, bang, bang. By the end of the day, I've done it probably 15 times. Uh, progressively heavier, by the end of the day, I'm getting close. If by some sense, I feel really fucking good that day, maybe I'll get a record. Maybe I'll go a little bit heavier and write it down on my little board that I beat the record, okay? But I don't care. So long as I'm charting lifts, I feel good, I feel healthy, that's how I do it, okay? And that to me is about the center, winning the center, being the most efficient, focusing on the most important and vital parts of arm wrestling. They made a movie about it, over the top, okay? Over the top wins. Look at the super heavyweight division, look at the top guys, okay? I'm gonna tell you that most of the guys are all top rollers. Jerry's in there, he's a trump card, and it's just, in my opinion, it's a technical thing. A lot of people don't understand how to deal with him yet. But once they do, it'll be hard for Jerry, okay? It'll be hard. Same way the Kings move was the flavor of the, the, the scene about five years ago. Everybody's like, Jesus Christ, you can't beat a Kings move. What the fuck, it's not even fair. Now people beat the king's move, people understand it more. Be same thing with the flopper's press, okay? But it's still, look at, look at where the scene is now, okay? Just look at the data, okay? Super heavyweight arm wrestling, most of the guys are top rollers, okay? Um, and, and, and I apologize, guys. I'm very open with my training. I'm probably wrong, <laughs> okay? It's my best guess. It's my best guess at the moment, okay? Talk to me again in uh, two years, okay? I, I guarantee I'll probably still be on Rise Cup Roll, might still be on Rise, who knows, we'll see. I'll talk, before we uh, have fun again, I'll just touch on two more things, and uh, uh, as you guys know, there's uh, a new theory I've been playing with for the last three years now. This month is my third year and I have only trained my right hand. That's pumpkin. it. That's it, pumpkin theory, right? Anybody here grow giant pumpkins? You gotta pinch them all off. You gotta, you gotta pinch off all the pumpkins except for one. Okay, what, what you see in nature 
is true throughout all of life, okay? You see, it, it works, okay? Um, so I've been doing pumpkin theory for three years, and I plan on continuing the experiment until it breaks. I'll, I'll probably run it for another five to 10 years probably. I'm so curious. I'm so curious if I can like make myself into Oleg without being born that way. I'm so curious. Uh, I think it's a really cool experiment. I, and I was so worried. I was so worried that I was gonna have back issues. I thought my posture was gonna get all fucked up. I thought I was gonna get hurt walking down the street. It's not the case. I'm probably healthier than I was when I started. So a lot of the whole things we hear about balance and symmetry, I am here to challenge those, and I'll tell you, in my personal opinion, it's all a myth. It's not true. You're, you're, you're a product of, uh, you know, if, if you face stress, that's what you must prepare for. If you are a professional arm wrestler, train, train for what you're gonna get ready for. You know, if, if you got a job where you're a firefighter or a police officer or a farmer, you might not want to fall away the giant pumpkin. But if you got time and, you know, might be right for you. Bump it back one more step. So I've talked about how to get strong, okay? And I think it's singles. I think it's don't hurt yourself. Uh, it's not the only way to train. There's many, many ways to train. A lot of my career, I've been injured. A lot, okay? Most of my career, I'm hurt. I normally am only good the day I show up for competition. Uh, and that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, ligaments, tendons, on an arm wrestler, if you're gonna spend a lot of time in the sport, you're probably gonna get hurt. You're probably gonna get tendonitis. Mm -hmm. It's fine, it's part, it's part of being an arm wrestler. It's part of the development that you have to go through. What you have to understand, wrap your mind around, is it's your job to fix those. And you don't fix them by doing singles, in my opinion. In my opinion, these structures need flow, they need movement, okay? So anytime you're hurt, you gotta find the pain and you gotta move fluids through it, okay? You're commonly gonna get hurt here, that's supination, okay? You gotta work light supination, you gotta flood it, you gotta flood the tissues. Marathon runners have some of the best connective structures in the world. Power lifters have some of the shittiest connective structures in the world. They do, it's true. They've cut open the cadavers, they've done studies, you know. Uh, reps feed white tissue. They've done, anybody uh, real curious on stuff like this, go on YouTube, look up a study called Strolling Under the Skin. Strolling Under the Skin. When I got into sport, I remember old arm wrestlers telling me, oh, it's a tendon sport, it's a ligament sport. Uh, and I'm like, I don't get it, it's muscles. Muscles are moving at weight. But tendons are the limiting factor. As you train for arm wrestling, you're gonna get injuries in your tendons and ligaments. So the way that fluids get through there is through movement. They have to move in order to feed. So at, at points in your career, you will have to adopt a protocol where you're doing tons of movement, tons of volume. Nothing wrong with that, yeah. You guys got any questions before we hit it again? Yeah. So you said you do uh, one reps, right? That's what and I then do at right the now. same time, you said to heal things, yeah. you do volume. Yeah. So do you go back to volume once in a while when you're hurt? Yeah, 100%. So like, if, if I feel good like I do now, I will be doing singles. Only? Only. I look at <laughs> I'm very convicted all the time. <laughs> Even when I'm wrong, okay? I'll be convicted, okay? And I'll tell you, I'll do a lot of different things, but I'll be convicted in the system that I'm working with at the time. A lot of different things work, okay? It's, it's probably more important that you believe in the system that you're training with than the system itself, okay? I've had great gains in all sorts of things. Why am I on this right now? Why do I love singles? One of the reasons is it's probably the most efficient way to train you can imagine. Like, it takes so little time. We're all busy. I don't have a job and I'm busy. Like, I, I couldn't imagine going back. Oh, I should check that. Who the fuck is that all? I'll answer. Yeah? That's cool. Oh, answer. Oh, it's probably a Sam number. This is Luke Campbell. Say hello. 
<laughs> ah, it's fucking. <laughs> yeah, fuck him. Just fuck him off, Tom. Who's Jeremy? No, <laughs> oh, we don't like him. We're good. Here's Jody's phone. Okay, okay, okay. Right. I got a, I got a pink phone, everybody. I got a pink phone. Uh, so you know, you you gotta be con- you gotta be convicted. You gotta be convicted in the system that you're going with. Okay, uh, a lot of them work. Singles is the easiest thing to do and it's so important. Like I always think like of the future. Where am I going? What am I trying to do? And I think what is the thing that I would love to have more of? The answer, right? Oh, oh yeah, for sure. No, 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 no. I, if there's one wish, it's being immortal. The phone? Yeah. Oh my God! Who was that? I don't. I think. Yeah. Was it Jeremy? Yeah. Oh, oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> I don't know for sure. I really didn't. I'm deaf in that ear. I barely heard. Was it Jeremy? Oh, fuck! Fuck it! Fuck it! Fuck! I fucked up. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I fucked okay. up. No, no, it's not. It's my fuck up. Cool. I'll take that. <laughs> hey, we got political prisoners in Canada right now. That was one of them. Yeah. Canada is a fucking disaster. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, well, I'll deal with that in a second. Sorry, dude. No, 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 that's my fault. When I pretend I have no intimate knowledge of anything, to me, it's very clear that Prudnik is the number one in the world at the heavyweight division. It's very clear when I look at video and, and, and nothing else. If I only base my knowledge off of competition, Prudnik is clearly the best in the world. It's really uh, impressive against Todd. Super impressive. Against Todd against Morozov, against Matt Mask. Yeah. Like, in competition, Prudnik is like, oh my God. And what a cool guy. What a smart guy. And I cannot, I, get, I start to get excited when I think about the trash talk I can do to that guy. He's gonna sing, he's gonna sing songs. <laughs> I'm so excited. So I hope, I hope that he wins. I hope that he wins. And I think he's a sandbagging uh, slime dog. I think, he, I think he's a liar and a cheater. Which, which, I great, which I greatly admire, okay? Uh, so, so you tell us to like, go 80% earlier, you told us to, how, how much percent do you think he actually goes at? 100%. Prednick is the most, he's talking about winning. Prednick is there to win. Yeah. Yeah, there's no, he's just there to win. It doesn't care. Hey? Right? You said he got huge in the last couple of years. He's definitely growing. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's heavyweight, okay? And you know, you talk about Prednick, Prudnik was, uh, Prudnik was 85 kilo. Like I remember watching Prudnik in, in WAF more than a decade ago. Yeah. And already I was like, that's a special guy right there. I remember, I remember Bobby, uh, yeah. Ukraine, yeah. Ukrainian yeah. arm wrestling, right? Right? And, and I remember the passing of the torch from Bobby Ev to Prudnik. And that was a major deal. B- Babiev is a is a is a god of the middleweight division in arm wrestling. Babiev, how many gold medals does that guy have? How good is that guy? Okay, and then Prudnik beat him like like legit, like deep and meaningful in submission. No, like oh I beat you with this trick. No, they went in there and the torch was passed. Right, so Prudnik, Prudnik. If you're the best in Ukraine, you're you're super bad, and and then you watch him come up. Uh, he's a very special guy in the sport. Okay, uh, it's a huge match. It's a huge match. Michael Todd versus Prudnik, and we're a month away. It's the biggest match on the card. I know John's on there. I know that Ermy's and Jerry's on there. But to me. That car, there's nothing I'm watching harder than Prudnik and Michael Todd because to me it signifies the number one at 115 kilo. And uh, without intimate knowledge, Prudnik wins. And that, that guy has tricked me. He's sandbagged me. He's, he's blown smoke into my eyes. Okay, I don't know what to think now. I think with my brain, it tells me that Michael's gonna win, but my brain is very stupid. <laughs> very stupid. Okay. Why do you think Prudnik doesn't know the king's move well enough? 
that why you said I, that? I think he's full of shit. And I think he's tricky. And I think that uh, I think he's brilliant on the table. And I think that we should be very careful what we take away from the practice. And I think that it would be hard not to have Prudnik as the favorite to win. But if I have money, I put it on Mike. So I don't know, but I always get it wrong. I'm so interested in that match. If Prudnik wins, 1,000%, he's my next guy. If Prudnik wins that match, there is nobody else that I want to pull. If he loses, then it gets interesting because I love Mike, but I just, I pulled him so much and everybody says I'm scared of Europeans and I just get tired of it, you know? So I got to probably face a European, um, you know, uh, even if Mike's the guy, you know, I don't know. So we'll see. If Mike wins, it just throws a wrench into it. If Prudnik wins, probably January, probably. Nothing signed. There's no. There's no agreement. But it'll. Yeah. It's. I think we both want. Yeah. Yeah. It's well. It's very likely. Very likely. Yeah. And it'll probably be a 253. Probably 253. How much yeah. do you weigh now? Probably 260. Yeah. So I could even get bigger if I wanted. Yeah. Right. Because it's like a 36-hour weigh-in, so you can get as big as you want. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, I'd probably just be as healthy as I could. Keep on doing what I'm doing, lots of table time, work my singles, work my ability to control the hand, crush that guy like a grape, you know. <laughs> Talk a whole lot, yeah. Bring it back to normal. Anyways, whatever. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. But I'm here for you guys. I'm here for you. If, if you want me to keep on, I, I can break into another chapter of, of talking about arm wrestling or, or we can play again. Let's play. Let's play. Hey, 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 right? hey. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Get your hand on there. Get that grip. Get his grip. There you go. Put the elbow up. Let's go. Elbow down, Brock. Elbow down. Elbow down. Come on, Brock. Yeah. Yeah. Get that hand up on that peg. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Elbow down. Elbow down, Brock. Get it. Let's go. Show more strength. Hell yeah, the power. <laughs> power. Yell it, power! Hell yeah. Yeah! Hell yeah. There you go, push it! Come push on, Brock, it. push it! Push Let's it. go! Show him, get it, get it! Oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> Ooh, drop that body, hit it! <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> now you can step over again. Now you can step over the thumb one more time. So I heard the side pressure is basically so, you can press like this. I guess if I love you, I'm going to go for it. Like, yeah. There we go. One down, I got one. One zero. Can't be a choke. Can't be a choke. It yeah. fucking works for you. Oh no shit. Uh, go ahead and tell him how much that move works for you. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> 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 that's the best corner man in the sport. Nelson's. Triple Nelson's to be specific. Yeah. 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 Has everybody gotten their stamps and waiver signs, all that shit done? Yeah, I have it. Taking your wallet. What's up, Vince? Yes, I do. No, we don't. Take his wallet. Take your wallet. Take his beanie. He loves it. Bring your chair too long. <laughs> Oh, buddy, get up there. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens to your wrist when you try to go sideways? Oh, yeah, I feel it. Everything's in my wrist. That's where most of my power's at. So if I can't do that, I'm screwed. you. <laughs> It's so cool. Do it again, do it again. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I want to see Polish. That's way too late. Oh, way to go, buddy. Get it to the table. Give it your all. <laughs> 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 in India, 
It's like that uh, brand from Canada. Easy to go. Hey! Good job, there you go. There you go. Israel, hit it down there and stay down there. Come back forward and hold it. You need better shit, bro. You need to go to Canada. Sorry, thanks. Yep, yep, yep. That's very good. You got me real turned over there. Come on, Israel. I think he's tired, man. <laughs> Just because you're the owner doesn't mean you can do what you want. I'm not going to get my Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Might as well. He took you out of where you wanted to be. Rotation <laughs> starts. He knows. Wow, his hand came up. Tom Nelson, everybody. Tom Nelson. Yeah. Yeah. Love you guys.